All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me. I'm completely skipping doing an intro for this video because I want to keep it as short and I want to get it out as fast as possible. I have, I have a lot of people contacting me about suddenly not being able to spin out new Pi-hole Docker instances on their Synology NAS. So I just want to tell you guys, you're not alone. It used to work before, it doesn't work now. There's, there's a reason behind it. The reason is, is that Pi-hole 6 was released and it's a completely rewritten version of Pi-hole. So even though it's the same kind of work process, the Docker Compose file, as you can see on screen, has been a little bit slightly changed. So you need to work with the new uh, Docker Compose file and we will go over the file to see what's, need, what's needed. But here's, for example, the, uh, the Docker Compose file from the official Pi-hole documentation. So we can see that the Pi-hole uh, uh, Docker Compose file uses or specifies the ports that we'll be using. Here, for example, the uh, ports for accessing the uh, web UI. We will change those, of course. These are ports if you are using your, your Pi-hole as a DHCP server or as an NTP server. This is where you'll specify your time zone. This is where you'll specify your password to get into the, into the web UI. This is where we'll specify the volumes or the folders that we will create just like we did on previous versions. And actually, that's it. Now, I know there are a lot of other more advanced versions or ways to get Pi-hole up and running. I'm going to show you the simplest way to quick and dirty to get up and running. I know also that we need to take a look at uh, migrating from version 5 to version 6. That will be a separate video on its own. So enough talking, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is to go into my NAS, into my file station. And this is my Docker shared folder where I uh, keep all the uh, Docker files of my Docker instances. And let's create a new folder and let's call it Pi-hole 6. Inside this folder, we'll need to create two subfolders. One will be called Pi-hole and the second will be named DNS mask.d and that's it. Now, what we'll need to do next is go into Container Manager, Project, and create a new project. Let's name the project Pi-hole 6. Let's specify the path inside the Docker folder, Pi-hole 6 folder. As for the Docker Compose YAML file, we'll need to create a new one. And in here, let's paste the official Docker Compose file from the Pi-hole documentation. So let's click here and paste. But here's what I want to change before I get started. First of all, I don't want to use port 80 or 443 because I don't want uh, to maybe conflict with other services running on these very default ports. So for me, I will change this to 8082 and this I will change to 4444. Just randomly select ports that you see fit. Another change, of course, will be the time zone and that, that's according to where you are located. But all the strings to all the available time zones, you will be able to find right here. So if you're in the United States, in maybe another country in Europe, you will find the correct string for the time zone right there. Now let's create a password for our Pi-hole instance. And let's just make it Pi-hole. That's great. One last thing that we'll need to do is to specify right here the folders that we've just created. So let's select up until the colon and let's click on it and delete. And let's start with slash volume one. For most people, it will be volume one unless you're doing multiple volumes. So you would know what the correct volume is for you. Slash Docker. That's just the my main shared folder uh, for Docker instances. Slash Pi-hole 6, that's the main folder that I've created, it's right here. And last slash will be the subfolder we named Pi-hole. That's great. Now I'm going to copy this string right here. 
because I do want to paste it up until this line right here but I'm going to change this last folder to DNS mask.d and I'm also going to uncomment this folder great that's the last modification that that I wanted to do I just want to make sure that uh, the docker behavior will be a restart unless stopped meaning that even if I restart my Synology NES the docker instance of PyHole will be automatically a powered on unless I manually stopped it in the in which case even if I restart the, the uh, Synology DSM device the uh, docker instance will not be uh, uh, powered on all right we are ready to continue so let's click on next as you can see it's the exact same amount of a uh, method of working with PyHole 5 just the docker compose template is a bit different let's click on next and we're ready to start the project once it's created. So let's keep our fingers crossed. We get some sort of uh, an error. Container name PyHole is already in use. I'm going to go back to my volume, to my project here. And I'm going to need to change this container name because I already have a container with PyHole for other testings. But you will probably not get this uh, error at all. And let's build it from scratch. All right, so probably this is what you'll see. Maybe we'll have a few lines of the uh, of the Docker of the Docker container pulling the latest version of PyHole. Otherwise, the exit code should be always zero, and that means everything was built out just fine. So let's click on close here, and if I go to project, I can see that my PyHole instance is indeed with a green light meaning that the docker itself the docker instance is up and running in fact let's try to access it by typing let me pull up a notepad here and so what i'll need to type in my browser if i want to access my pie hole now is https the ip address of my synology nas colon 4444 slash admin let's take this string right here open up a new tab all right great meaning i now get into the if i click on continue here i get to the pi hole web ui i'll type my password which is pi hole great now i'm get i'm i'm at least ready to start working with pi hole version 6 and i'm ready to uh, build up my pi hole by the way just so you know, we have a few a, a few modifications we need to do in order to get our pie hole at least more robust or ready to work with. One of the more uh, major uh, changes that we need to do is to add uh, lists to our pie hole, and I'll ha and I have a great resource to add lists to our pie hole, and I will of course put the link to this resource in the description of this video. If I scroll down. For example, let's take add lists. I'll copy the link. I'll go to my pie hole and I'll go to lists, paste the URL, add block list. Let's add another one. For example, for malware, copy link, paste it, add block list. And let's even do another one for ransomware. That's great. Copy link. Paste it in. Add block list. That's great. Uh, by the way, just before I update all the lists, I do want to show you how to add, for example, known domains that you might use that you want to whitelist. So let's go into domains. For example, if I'll add amazon.com i know that it's a little bit of a prog problematic a, a, a domain when you don't have it whitelisted at least in my experience so i'll write amazon.com add as a wildcard and i'll select add allowed domains so every time you take a look at the query log and you see something that's blocked that shouldn't be you can just just 
add the entire domain or you, I'll show you how you can just click allow next to the blocked entry. For now, we've seen how to add lists and how to add whitelisted domains. The next thing we'll, that we'll do is to update the gravity. The gravity is the mechanism that uh, actually updates the list and populates them. So let's go to, sorry, tools, update gravity and click on update. This might take a minute or two or three. Just let it run. Do not navigate away. Just be patient with it. All right, we got the green light. So let's go back to the dashboard and we can see we have this many uh, domains on our block lists. So let's, for example, try to go into a website that I know contains many ads usually and that's speed test. All right, so we're in speed test and we can see that we don't have any ads at all. But if I'll go to my pie hole, I'll see that I do have blocked queries that came from me browsing into speed test. And if I'll see anything that I do want to allow, I can just click on the allow button right here. Usually, not always, I will need to restart the Docker instance, but that domain or that host will not be blocked by Pi-hole anymore. One last thing, just quick and dirty when we're talking about, about Pi-hole, is what Pi-hole uses as its DNS when it doesn't know how to get to a certain site. You can control that by going into settings and DNS. And by default, the upstream DNS servers for Pi-hole will be the, D the Google DNS servers, but you can of course change it or add, for example, another provider of DNS for a, a Pi-hole to use as an upstream DNS, just as a general a, a kind of getting a, a around in the Pi-hole interface. But otherwise, guys, this is how you spin up a new Pi-hole version 6 Docker instance in Synology, how you add uh, lists to it, how you add whitelisted domains. All right, guys, I hope this was informative for you. If you like this video, please give it a like, and I will see you all in the next video. Maybe it will be the video of migrating from Pi-hole version 5 to version 6. All right, guys, take care.